Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 61. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 5. If you're in the class, just go to our Chapter 5 website. Hey, we're talking about discrete probability distributions and the mean and standard deviation. Great example from finance. Uh, we have state of the economy, either it's going to be great, normal, or not so good. And we have some probabilities associated with each one of those states. Ah, we've also estimated our stock returns for each particular state. And what we would like to know is what is the expected return for stock A, given that we have some probabilities and uh, some returns for each. And then we want to calculate our standard deviation. Now, as we saw in the last two videos, you simply take your x times your probability, and you can get your expected value or your mean. So here we go. We're going to use the sum product, just like the last few videos. Sum product. Two arrays. We simply take our probabilities, comma, and our x values. That's the random variable. Um, that can assume a different values. Close parentheses. Now I want you to notice something before we hit enter. We're going to put this formula right here and then we're going to build another one here and then another one here. But column, 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 relative cell reference, are all three of these columns going to use that locked? Yes, so guess what? We can just lock this. In fact, I should have done it when we uh, first entered it, then I wouldn't have to do it in two steps. Put your cursor there, F4. Put your cursor there, F4. Just like that, control enter, it'll calculate the expected value, but when we drag it over and click in the last cell and hit F2, you can see, sure enough, that one's locked, that one's not. Totally excellent example. Now, Remember, we saw how to do expected value calculation longhand. Then we saw how to do it with the sum product. And now we're seeing how to a practical example where you have to do lots of different expected values. And if you know your uh, absolute and relative cell references, you're even faster, right? All right, uh, now standard deviation. We've done this in a couple of videos. We'll do this all together in this one. I'm gonna, we're going to type the whole formula out. Last couple of videos, we did the sum product, then we entered it, put it in edit mode, and then put a square root around it. But we're just going to start off after you get used to it. And it takes a while to get used to bigger formulas. But once you do it for your homework, you know, five, six, seven, eight times, by the sixth, seventh, eighth time, you're able to type a square root and then type a sum product. Boom, just like that. Now, we know that we have to, um, for standard deviation, get our deviation squared. So we're going to put in parentheses our x values minus our one particular uh, mean for this column right here, close parentheses, shift 6, which is caret, exponent 2. Now, that is the first array we want. And we're going to think uh, efficiency here. This formula is going to be copied there and then there, right? Are all of these relative cell reference? So when you move over to this column, the blue and the green need to move there? Yeah. So array, type a comma, and now it's asking for the next array. Well, we know from our formula, we have to take the deviation squared times the associated probability for each x. So we just highlight that array right there. Now, that needs to be locked, so I'm going to hit the F4 keys. Notice how F4 key works when you first put the range in. If you hit F4, it knows to do both of them. If you do it later, it doesn't. Now, I'm going to close parentheses. Watch the screen tip. Now, we've, we're starting to build bigger formulas, right? But watch this. When you're building bigger formulas, the screen tips are super polite. When I do a close parentheses, what happens? It reminds you that now you're inside the next um, function. And so now, it get, in bold, it gives you the number. So there's only one thing left, which is the parentheses there. So you put a parentheses. And then you see no more screen tips, you know you're done with your parentheses. Now I'm going to hit Enter. And I'm going to double click. I mean, um, you can't double click to the side. I'm going to point to my fill handle when I see me angry rabbit. I'll click and drag. And just like that, 
Ah, oh, that is just amazing. Uh, learning some statistics and some efficient Excel, so when you get out there in your job, you're just going to, the boss is never going to want to get rid of you because you're like the only one in the office that knows how to do it efficiently. Now, uh, so mean standard deviation, back in chapter 3, we saw that we have these different stocks, but to compare them, we use something called uh, coefficient of variation. Or in finance, you can also use the inverse, which would be mean divided by standard deviation, which would mean return per unit of standard deviation. But we're going to stick what we learned uh, in, in this chapter here. Coefficient of variance, standard deviation divided by mean. I'm going to highlight all the cells. And in the active cell, I'm going to say equals the standard deviation divided by the mean, and I've highlighted the cells, so to populate them with this great formula, control enter. There it is. It tells us for every one unit of mean how much risk we have, standard deviation. In uh, finance, uh, standard deviation equals a proxy for risk. Let me make this just a little bit smaller. Now, wh what can we uh, conclude from this? Oh. There's risk per, per unit of mean. Oh, that's gigantic. Oh, this one's the smallest. So uh, per unit of mean, this one is the least risky. So the smaller it is, the less variation there is, the less uh, risk there is. All right, uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about our next discrete probability distribution, the binomial. See you then.